Hey guys, this is Brian with Radical Prep. I'm going to help you with the integrated algebra regions. It's uh, January 2015. So let's go through it. So hopefully we'll get you through and do a good on the regions. Let's go to question one here on part one. Okay. So part one, number one. If A equals the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and B equals the set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, the intersection of sets A and B is. So when you're doing intersection, you're just looking for the common things in both sets. So we're actually going to do that now. Let's look for the common things, and it's really just the even numbers here. So we've got, let me switch over to my pencil here. We got 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. It's easy as that. You're just looking for the common stuff in intersection. All right? Number two, and we're moving on. All right, let's go to number two. What is the value of n in the equation 0.2 times n minus 6, and it equals 2.8? So all you're going to do here is you're doing distribution. So you're going to multiply 0.2 by that and 0.2 by that. So we're going to have 0.2n minus, well, 2 times 6 is 12. And we just have one decimal place, right? So we'll put the one decimal place there. Equals 2.8. I'm going to solve. I'm going to add 1.2. Add 1.2. That crosses out. 0.2n equals 2.8 plus 1.2 is just 4.0 or 4. Divide by 0.2. Divide by 0.2. You can do this in your head um, or on paper. Or if you have your calculator here, which you'll have during test day, don't you know? Don't sweat it. Four divided by 0.2 is 20. That's it. N equals 20. Choice number three. You're done. Move on. All right. Next one. We have got number three. Move that up. So we got this expression here, and you should know your exponent rules. So really, all you're going to do is. You're going to look at this in pieces. 24 divided by negative 6, that's going to be negative 4. Well, they all have got negative 4, so we can't really eliminate anything yet, but I can get rid of that on the paper. x to the 6th over x to the 3, you just subtract. So it's going to be 6 minus 3. So that's x to the 3. Okay. So now we can get rid of some stuff. That one's gone. You're not going to divide. You're going to subtract the exponents. Same base, subtract the exponents. And that one's gone. Let's do the y's. y to the 3 over y to the 1. That's just 3. There's an imaginary 1 here. But 3 minus 1 is 2. We can put y to the 2. All right. Leaves us with choice 4. You're done. Move on. So just know if I have x to the a divided by x to the b, it's the same thing as x to the a minus b. Okay, um, I'll do another quick one. y to the 7 over y to the 2. What is that, everybody? Should have said y to the 5. Okay, keep going. We're going to get this test done fast and go home and relax after this. Um, let's go down to the next one. Which situation is represented by bivariate data? All right, well, what does bivariate mean? It means you need two things two types of data going on. So you should know that about bivariate. Two types of data. A student lists her algebra quiz grades for one month. It's just quiz grades, right? One piece of data. A wrestler records his weight before each match. Just the weight. That's univariate. Just one type of data. A musician writes down how many minutes she practices her instrument each day. Again, what's her info? Just minutes each day. Gone. Well, it's got to be four, but hopefully it'll just check it. An ice cream vendor tracks the daily high temperature and how many ice cream bars he sells. So we've got the amount of ice cream bars sold and the daily high temperature. We've got two pieces of data bivariate. All right, cool. Let's keep going. Number five. All right, a cylinder has a, cir a circular base. Sorry about that. A cylinder has a circular base with a radius of three and a height of seven. What is the volume? All right, so you can draw this out, but to picture it in your head, um, where's my pen? 
all you're going to do is, come on, okay, all you're going to do is draw a circle, that's the base of your cylinder, right, and we know they said that, 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 that from the center out, that's three, I'll put a three here, and then we'll draw this up as neatly as possible, but I'm new to this, this software, so I might suck at this right now, right, all right, not too bad. And we got a height going all the way up to the top. Okay. And that height is 7. Okay. So how do you do the area of a circle? Area of a circle is just pi r squared. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. And what do we extend? We just extended the height, right? So it's going to be pi r squared times h. That's how you get volume. It's a circle that got extended up. So let's just put the data in. Let's put our info in there. Our radius is 3, so 3 squared is 9. And what's our height? We said our height was 7. So we should get 63 pi. Choice 3. We're done. Move on. I hope you got that. A cylinder is just a circle that's, that's multiplied by height. It's a circle that extends up. Pi r squared h. All right, let's keep going. Number six. Um, all right, there's a, we're a little short on room here. Here, let me do this. Might be able to fit it in. There we go. Okay, so we've got this graph. It's a parabola, and it says based on the graph, what are the roots of the equation? So roots, if you remember, are just where it hits the x-axis. So we're looking for what this value is, and we're looking for this value. Roots are just where it hits the x-axis. So we've got negative one, x equals negative 1 and this one is 1 2 3 4 5 x equals 5 it's that simple um, where are we here negative 1 and 5 that's it you're done move on choice 2 All right, I'll zoom back out again Let's move down. All right, choice seven, or question seven. Jose wants to ride his bike a total of 50 miles this weekend. If he rides M miles on Saturday, which expression rep represents the number of miles he must ride on Sunday? So you can do this two ways. You can plug in a number, but I think it may be easier just to think about it like logically. Um, he wants to ride his bike a uh, total of 50. So we're starting off with 50. He rides his bike so many miles on Saturday. So we want to know how much is left. So it's the total minus how much he did. That should make sense, right? So it's just choice three. Now let's say you couldn't get there. I think that's not that bad to get to that answer. But let's say you thought, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm just going to assume that he rides 10 miles on Saturday. Well, if he wants to do 50 and he rode 10 on Saturday, he's got to do 40 on Sunday, right? So your magic number would be 40. So you have to go back and plug in the number you used for M, which was 10, and find 40. 10 minus 50 is not 40. 10 plus 50 is not 40. What do you know? 50 minus 10 is 40. So 3 is still the correct answer. Hope that made sense. Kind of two ways you can do the same problem. All right. Um, let's go down. Number 8. Four students are playing a math game at home. One of the math game questions asks them to write an algebraic equation. All right, so I'll be honest here. I couldn't remember what the heck an algebraic equation was. And I just looked up online, and pretty much you just got to have an equal sign. I think the rest of them are expressions. So the problem is no equal sign. Oh, you get the idea. I don't have to X everything out. The only one that has an equal sign is Kayla. So Kayla is correct. All right. You need an equal sign for an algebraic equation. Let's move on. We will go to number nine. All right. A student spent 15 minutes painting a two foot by three foot bulletin board. To the nearest tenth of a minute, how long did it take the student to paint one square foot? Okay, so you need a ratio for this one. So I'll say uh, tenth of a minute. So we got 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, it's a 2 foot by 3 foot. 
So it's two by three, it's six. I'm just multiplying. Six square feet. Uh, how long did it take the student to paint one square foot? See that the reason I had to multiply there is because the answer is in square feet. So this has to be square feet. So one square foot, one square foot. We don't know how long it's gonna take, so we call it X, and we're just gonna cross multiply here, right? Cross multiply, six X equals 15, divide by six, divide by six, if you got your calculator, 15 divided by six equals 2.5, answer three. That's it, I'll write it here, X equals 2.5. All right, let's move on, chugging along. What is an equation of the line that passes through the point two, one, and six, negative five? So the first thing I would do is, I remember back in the day, they used to teach you um, y equals mx plus b. That's kind of the formula you wanna get your slope into. And slope, which is this one, the m value, is uh, what y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So just look at your points. Well, let's do one minus negative five. So one minus negative five. And I started off with this one, right? One minus negative five. Now I'll do my x's, two minus six. Two minus six. So one minus negative five, that's gonna be six. Two minus six is negative four and this reduces to negative 3 halves. So we got a slope, right? So now we gotta look and find out where's the negative 3 halves. So it's answer is one and two. So I, I like crossing things out. I get rid of those, I don't have to think about it anymore. So now we gotta figure out the y-intercept. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna write my equation with what I know. y equals slope is negative 3 halves, x plus b. b is your y-intercept. That's where the graph it's the y-axis. How do I figure that out? All you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in one of these points. And I'm gonna pick this one because it's the easier one. The numbers are smaller. So the x value is two and the y value is one. So let's plug that in. The y value is one and the x value is two. So it's negative three halves times two plus b. So two over two cancels out. And then we've got one equals negative three plus b. I'll add three to both sides, add three to both sides, and I get four. So your y-intercept is four. It's choice two. All right, hope that was pretty easy for you. All you gotta do, use the y equals mx plus b, get your slope. Once you get your slope, pick one of these, these points. You could have picked this one over here, it would have worked. I just picked two, uh, two, one. All right.